it going everyone? Uh, today I thought I'd do a little uh, disc cleaning. Show you how I uh, clean discs and all that. This is for my subscribers that subscribe to my channel for for the home videos. Home video game systems. Uh, I still do quite a bit of that. Um, I'm getting kind of getting back into it a little bit more. Uh, since I'm going to start selling a lot of my uh, used games that I do have left uh, down at the outdoor market. So I have to go through and clean all my games. Um, I use these, the JFJ Easy Pro. Now I had one of my subscribers tell me that they had never seen these before. And by all means these are not a new product. These have been out. This one here I've had for oh probably eight to ten years I've been using this one this one uh, I've only been using this one probably for about six um, this one I've probably have run I'm gonna guess probably five to six thousand video games movies and CDs through this one um, the head was starting to get a little little loose on it and I couldn't get them done fast enough. You know, people that are just doing these for themselves, discs for themselves, cleaning their own discs, or if they want to uh, sell some discs, some games, movies, or CDs, you know, you only need one of them. One of them's uh, more than enough, but if you're going to be doing quite a bit of volume in order to move through them a little quicker, too, really works out good. This one now, I just use this one for sand and scratches out. Uh, I don't do much buffing in this one at all. This one, I do all the buffing with. Uh, there's two, two types of sandpaper that you use on these. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a coarse, which is, uh, let's see, there's the, that's the fine. Yeah, sure, drop it on the floor. Why not? Uh, this is the coarse sandpaper, which is a 600 grit, wet or dry. Uh, you can buy these, buy the kit or the sandpaper on eBay or Amazon. If you go to Amazon, use my link and I will get a small commission. Uh, the fine sandpaper is 1200 grit, wet or, wet or dry. Um, same thing with these. You can buy these on eBay or Amazon. And like I said, if you go to Amazon and if you use my link, my, my link down below, you can. I'll get a small commission if you buy one. They're about $199 now, which is actually down. The first one I bought was. Uh, I think this one was right around 279 and this one was uh, this one I, I bought as a kit let me let me think here yeah this one when I bought this one I got two of them I got the the JFJ Pro for regular discs and came with this one, JFJ Icon. That one is strictly for Blu-ray, which don't waste your money. I mean, I can I use it for other things besides Blu-rays. You can it'll run Blu-rays through. We'll get into discs a little bit later, and I'll show you what the easiest way to clean Blu-rays. Plus, I have a buffer. Uh, this is great for taking out um, fine scratches and just polishing up the disc so it looks like brand new. But uh, like I said, so this way with two of them, I can sand sand the disc and then move it over here, start buffing it, and then I can start sanding another disc. Because trust me, when I uh, I'll buy any any discs, I don't care the condition, as long as they're not dented or have a dimple in them or 
you know, a scratch that's really, really deep. Uh, I don't buy those, but if they're scratched up, I buy them because I can, I can fix them. And we'll get into that here in a little bit as well. But if you're going to be doing a lot of them, two of them really work out great. Now the reviews on these are, are really mixed on the JFJ. I've never had a problem with them. Uh, you, you just have to take your time and there's a pretty big learning curve on getting these to work like they should or like you want them to, I should say. Alone, uh, they work great. When you polish them out, you still do have some really fine uh, scratch swirls in it from, you know, buffing because you're using a polishing compound. So you're always going to have some slight scratches. You're not going to get that really, that real mirror finish. And that's where the cotton wheel comes in. Here I can make it, I can polish them out and make them look like brand new. Or even better than brand new. But that's the way to do them as far as uh, doing a lot of them. But if you're just going to do a couple, you know, like if you want to do your own collection, you have some or you bought a couple that are scratched, one is fine. They do sell a kit to where you can repair GameCube discs. But again, don't waste your money. It it destroys more discs than it fixes. I'll show you. We'll, we'll get into cleaning GameCube discs here in a little bit as well. And I'll show you how, to, how I clean them up and make them look and work like they should. So let's take a walk. We're going to go over and I'm going to show you all the discs that I clean on this. Or clean with this. Alright, here's all our discs. You know, we have... PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, GameCube, and Wii. Sega CD, Dreamcast, Saturn. We have just a regular music CD and movie. Now, now out of all these discs, what I have found that the, those JFJs work the best on are our PlayStation 1s and 2s, our Xbox and Xbox 360, our Wii Wii, and movies. The finish on these on these games like Xbox and 360, PlayStation 1 and 2, Wii, and movies. The finish on these, which is a, a lacquer coating that coats the information, is softer than, we'll say, like a Blu-ray. Blu-ray is hard as hell. I don't know what they, it's actually, I think it's actually a plastic coating on a Blu-ray and it makes it really hard to clean. Uh, the JFJs uh, have a hell of a time cleaning these because they're so hard. And if you get scratches on these, which I have a... I don't know how the hell you scratch the Blu-rays. I mean, you really have to get ignorant with them to get a scratch in a Blu-ray. But smudges and stuff like that, yeah, I'll show you how to clean that. And let's see, on your PlayStation 1s, this black coating, it's soft enough. In fact, it's really soft. So when you get them that are really scratched up and you start sanding on them, what happens is you kind of make a bowl out of this out of these. You'll, you'll sand the center more than you will the edge and the inside. And what happens then is then, you know, the disc will look immaculate. 
but if you look really close you can see there will be a ridge it'll be just a little bit of a hump and for some reason our lasers will not read down in the the difference uh, this is what I have found the difference between the depth will not let your laser read it and on our let's see I don't know if I have a really really bad one here now see the blue coating same thing it those are easy to clean with the PlayStation 2 there's one that's really really nasty and rule of thumb with these is if you I don't think I have is if you run your fingernail over them over a scratch and it sounds like railroad tracks going click 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 you know you're gonna have some problems in getting that out and you're gonna be using the 600 grit an awful lot to get a scratch out like that but you can do it and they will work on your blu-rays if you get a blu-ray in and you run your fingernail over it and it clicks throw it out I there's I have not been able to find any way to take a scratch out of a blu-ray that's that deep on our Sega's our three Sega's these are really these really have a hard surface as well which really makes it hard for cleaning them up but you can get them clean enough uh, some of them if you have just some scratches a few scratches left in it and you just can't get them out most of the time your laser will read it if your laser is in really good shape and on these uh, seat the Sega's if you if you have a scratch on the top side forget it it's not gonna not gonna read it even though it, if it ha even if it hasn't scratched the information it seems like if it shine if the laser goes through it will not read it this is what I have found this is not a not a known fact or anything this is just what I have found CDs CDs will clean up but they're hard as hell surface on these are really hard too so most of the time you still end up with a track or two that will skip if they're really scratched up bad because for some reason you just cannot get it all out and same thing if there's a scratch on the top surface it will not read through it, it or the laser just kind of shines through movies movies are soft as hell they're like our game discs these you can really you can really get some shitty ones in and with some really deep bad scratches and you can really buff these out and make movies you know and repair your movies like I said GameCube what happens with GameCube is they're so small and you buy that kit for the JFJ when you start sanding and buffing it heats this coating up so so bad that it cracks all along the edge and voila you have doo-doo because lasers cannot read through cracks and if you remember if you're old enough to remember when CDs came out they told us that CDs would last for 500 years or whatever and you could play them even if they're scratched they you could throw them on the ground and skid them across the pavement and put them in and they'll play fine boy were they wrong I don't know who the hell came up with that plus if you leave your music CDs in your car all the time with heat it will actually cook these things and they will not play so never leave your CDs in a in a hot area same with any of your game discs repair percentage on on games and movies and CDs your PlayStation 1's and 2's Xbox your 360's your Wii and your movies with the JFJ 
your percentage is going to be right around 80 to 90 percent success depending you know unless they're really destroyed like I said if a if a disc is cracked if I don't uh, no, I didn't put any out here I threw them out already if you have a disc that's cracked or if it looks like a dog bit it or, or, or a cookie cruncher got a hold of it and bit it it's not gonna and it's dimpled forget it laser cannot read in that divot throw it out no sense no don't even try but 80 to 90 percent on those discs uh, your your blu-rays you're down oh god you're if it's if your fingernail doesn't click over a scratch on a blu-ray uh, but it's still scratched up um, I have see there's a few scratches on this PS4 now the PS this one I'll be able to fix this there's light scratches on it uh, right up in there I'll have probably maybe a 50% chance to fix that disc same with your your old, your dream your Sega's and your CD's because the coating is so hard that you know the percentage drops now like on the uh, let's see on this Dreamcast this one is pretty pretty scratched up all along the edge there Sonic Adventures I'll probably this one here same thing probably about a 60 65 percent chance I'll be able to fix that disc and be able to play it Saturn's same way same thing CDs same thing about a 60 to 70 percent chance GameCube now the way I fix GameCubes, I can get them, about 90% of them I can fix without using the machine. But if you're really, you know, if you like the old, older games, you know, you're going to have a great, great success rate in playing these old games again. And your Wii Wii, playing with your Wii Wii. And movies. You know, if you're really into a lot of movies, you like to keep all your movies on CDs, trust me, you're going to fix a lot of those movies and be able to watch them. Music, yeah, you kind of, but the, the new Blu-rays, it is really tough to fix these. So I'll, I'll get you set up over there and we'll clean a couple of discs and see what we and I'll show you how I fix them up. Okay, we're going to start out with a PlayStation game. I uh, got Tekken out because this one, you can see, how badly scratched this disc is. And I got my PlayStation 2 set up here, as you can see. I'll put Tekken in. And it's not doing a thing. Okay, here we go. It did. <laughs> and you can see what it's doing. It's telling us that that, that that CD, that game disc, is an audio CD. What it's doing is it's reading the tracks off of the off of the disc, but that's all it'll do. It won't come up as a PlayStation game. So now let's let's fix this game and see if we can get this game to work. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the disc and see how how deep the scratches are, if they're if your fingernail doesn't run over it, then you're not going to have, to, or doesn't make any noise when you run your fingernail over any of the scratches, and you, we're not going to have to sand it really 
hard. Uh, I am going to start out with the with the heavy one on this. I have to put a new one on because I kind of wore out the last one. And these are just peel and stick. We're not going to have to get real, real aggressive with it. Since they're not... Now on your on the front of these you have 10 second, 20 second, 1 minute, and 2 minute. Um, I'm just going to sand this Come on. At 10 seconds on the heavy one. And I'll take a look at it. You can. You can see what it does. It'll sand those scratches out. Hopefully you get them all. You don't have to redo it. And we'll take our light. The 1200. Same thing. Only going to do it for 10 seconds. That'll sand out the the heavier the 600 scratches and remove some of the other little ones. Now on our compound, I think you can see this. You don't have to get really too heavy with your compound. I usually put like three three or four drops on my pad. Close her up and I'm gonna. It's the first disc, so it's gonna be a little out of balance. I'll do it for a minute. It'll smooth out, trust me. These pads, they start out about that thick. You can get, oh, probably 250 to 500. It just depends on how much you're really getting into it out of these pads. So you can see you get quite a bit out of one of those buffing pads. It's buffed it for about a minute. I'm going to take him off. We'll take our microfiber cloth, wipe him off, and you can see that's the first one I've done today. So it's didn't clean it up as good as I want it to, so I'm going to have to run it again. I said it's not a perfect science it you know if you're in a hurry to do discs uh, it's it takes time and practice uh, the more you the more of them you clean the better you get at it These uh, black discs are really soft, the finish on them, so you have to really be careful that you don't sand off too much, like I said earlier. If you sand off too much, you're never going to, it'll never work. Uh, I've had these in where if there's heavy, heavy scratches on them, you know, you can sand them maybe two or three times and 
after that, then you're, you're sanding them too much and they're just not going to work. Okay, buff that out again. Wipe it off. And like I said, as you can see, they're still still a little rough along the edges and it'll have swirls, light swirls in it. And that's where I'll move you over here. Hang on. And now what I will do is I will use my buffer my cotton wheel when you're using this buffer do not get too heavy along the edges you will burn the disc right off you will burn the coating right off of it You can use just this buffing wheel to clean off light scratches too. You don't have to use the machine. There's a lot of discs that all you have to do is use this little buffer as my buffer is walking around. Take my cloth. You will leave a little bit of a haze on it with that compound on your buffer, but as you can see, Looks good. Now let's take it over. Get you down off of here. We'll take it over to our PlayStation 2. See, it's still tacking. Put him in. Now we have the, got her all cleaned up and we put it in. And we'll see what happens. And see, we're still back to just audio. So, in other words, Tekken is junk. That's one that you'll never get cleaned up. It'll always continue to just say audio. So that one we can throw out. Which sucks, but... So let's find something, another one. Let's, let's do this Creatures. Nightmare Creatures 2. Let's go ahead and clean that one up. If I can get in here. Got all my crap in the way. I brought everything out to the house to, to work on. There we go. Now creatures, when I put it in, it does play, but I don't think it, it won't won't play through the whole game because it, it is all scratched up. And PlayStation 1's original PlayStation games 
are another one that's really hard to get clean. I'm just going to use the regular, the fine sandpaper on this one for about 10 seconds. PlayStation games can really be a pain. A lot of times they won't clean up. Uh, I, I don't know why, but a lot of them will not. Same thing, we're going to put it on a buffer and we're just going to oh, put about three or four drops on there. PlayStation games, there's a lot of really good games and there's some high dollar games out there for the PlayStation, but you can't always fix PlayStation games. Uh, for example, Final Fantasy, I probably have, I don't know, three or four incomplete sets because usually number one, number one disc is always the worst because that's the one that's played the most and it won't play when you put it in uh, I try and clean it and I still can't get it to play I mean it's not perfect so uh, you cannot f always fix a PlayStation game you know you, you gotta try because there's a lot of good games alright same thing we got it buffed out, wipe it off, and you can see it still leaves light scratches on it. There is another compound, another polishing compound that you can use on it, but it still will still leave light scratches. So in order to take out all the scratches, we're going to use the buffer. Very lightly. Still don't like it. Still has a lot of still has a lot of scratches left in it. The, the fine paper didn't take it out as, as much as I want it to. So I'm gonna hit it with the the 600 for about 10 seconds. Well, not for about, but for 10 seconds. See if I can get some more of those scratches out of it. And then the light, and I'm gonna hit it with the light for about 20 seconds. It's, it, it takes time to figure out how much to sand and what sandpaper to use. I mean, you think you got it down and then you'll get a disc that it, it, it doesn't work what you're doing. You just have to have to keep at it. It's not something that you can just throw in, sand a little bit and then and it comes out perfect. It never does.
come over here to the PlayStation 2. And right about no memory card. Yeah, I know. Konami. And right here is where it would freeze up. I love the track on this. <laughs> All right, let's see if it'll start a game. New game, yep. It was during the cursed year of 1934 that Crowley... Alright, we'll skip that. Make sure it'll load the game. <laughs> trying to do this one-handed not working too good <laughs> all right anyway you can see the game is working now after running it through the disk machine okay we'll do one more <clears throat> we'll do a regular playstation game you can see this is red dead revolver this one is destroyed see how bad that is and there's but i've checked it there's a couple of them on here that you will you catch your fingernail on a little bit and I'll show you what it does when you put it in. There is no data. And you get this. Please insert a PlayStation or PlayStation 2 format disk. That's what you get when you put this disc in. Now we'll take it over and we will clean it. Okay, now on this one, as bad as this one is, I showed you over there how bad that disc is. Put it in, we're going to Take our 600, sand it for 20 seconds, okay, now we'll take a look at it. And see if I can see any, still see any of the scratches showing through, which I do right along the edge. 
so I'm going to hit that with another 10 seconds. This one may take us a couple of rounds to get this one done. Now, it, yeah, got it sanded all the way out to the edge now. Take our fine grit, our 1200. Do 20 seconds. Like I said, a lot of these, when they're like that, you know, you can get them squared away. Sometimes some of them take you a little longer than others. It just depends on on the game and what what you're doing. If you're doing them for yourself, you have all the time in the world. You can clean them. Now let me see something here. Yeah. Okay, you can tell when you're sandpaper. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, is getting too soft or, you know, wore out. You'll get these little, little weird things all around the center. Uh, it's starting to do it. So I know my sandpaper is wore out. If you try and buff those out, what it does is it, it'll leave a ripple. It leaves a little ripple. around it and your laser will not read it because what I have found out is that your PlayStation PlayStation 2 it seems like all of them start by reading the center that's where it tells you I think that's where it tells you the title the title and if it's a PlayStation 2 and then it runs out to the edge and this is just what I have found out I may be wrong but it, it's got to be able to read that center first. has to be able to read in here first and that's what tells it what what format or what genre the disc is same thing you got a little runny sitting in here finally warmed up and then we'll buff it out with one minute and then we'll take a look at it and see how it looks some scratches uh, the PlayStation 2's and 3's and all of them Xboxes 360's will read through some of the light scratches but you've seen what that one looked like. There's no chance in hell it was going to read anything. You've seen what the PlayStation 2 did. It had no data or put in a PlayStation or PlayStation 2 disc. So you definitely know when it's doing that that it's not going to read it. Say it didn't didn't quite sand the edges enough. Still got a little bit up in here. I'll see if I can't buff them out with the with the buffer here. It will not, it won't buff them out, so we're going to have to sand it some more. These PlayStation 2 discs are a little bit more hardier than the PlayStation discs. They're just a little bit harder. The, uh, the surface on them is just a little bit harder. They'll take a little bit more of abuse than the PlayStation games. Those black discs. They, they have to be almost 
perfect in order for them to run really well. And if this is boring you, you can move on to the next segment. Same thing, I'm doing 20 with the coarse and 20 with the fine. After a while, some of them that, are, that aren't scratched so bad like this one, once you clean them up, you'll know, you, you'll know by looking at it if it's going to work or not. Uh, when I first started doing them, I, I tested everything. Every disc I, I cleaned, I tested. Until I got familiar with what will work and what won't work. When I get moving along and I'm doing a lot of discs, like I said, I can I can sand one, I can put it in, start buffing it, put another one in and start sanding it. When this is done, I'll pull that disc out, set it on my buffer, move this one over to buff and another one in to sand, and then I can start cleaning it up with the buffer, the other one with the buffer. And I can just keep moving right along, just keep on feeding this right across. And I've had it to where I've had them had my machine so hot it was melting the lacquer on the discs. That's how hot I got that motor or the, the pad from the friction. You know, and that, that's really moving through. That's when I have a ton of them to do. But now uh, I'm not doing quite as many, so I, I can just take my time and, you know, I can sand and move, you know, move down and make sure my machines stay cool. I've had it to where you couldn't even touch my buffer. It was so hot. And the frick, because your buffer doesn't really take material off per se. It flows. It'll flow the material into cracks and crevices. I see this one still. I still have a lot of, a lot of some scratches up through this edge. just too deep. They're just way too deep to to buff out. see what we got. I still don't think it's going to work because I still still a few scratches out towards the edges. That will take Let's try it and see what happens. And there she is, PlayStation 2.
Okay, there's the lead-in track. Skip through and see if it'll start a game. No memory card or press to continue. Sex to continue. Start button. Story mode. And see she's she's working. <laughs> Alright, Lee. So see we've cleaned a PlayStation One and a PlayStation Two disc. Uh, it's the same with the uh, Xbox and the Xbox 360 discs. They clean up the same way, along with your Wii. Uh, next, we will we'll take a look at a, a couple other ones, like maybe a like a Blu-ray, and show you how I fix up a Blu-ray. Yeah. Skip that. Yep. Target practice area for you. You can see she's working. Okay, now, you can see PS4. See how dirty it is. You can see that there is some scratches in this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my buffer and buff it out the best I can. Uh, the, ma the machine will clean it up somewhat but not not as good as I can buff it out. Now, put a little bit of that wax on it and these you can be a little more aggressive with because it's a harder surface.
Okay, and there's your PS4. Oops. So you can get the Blu-rays pretty clean. There's still some, there's going to still be some scratches in it, but now it should all play. All you're doing on these Blu-rays is when you buff them out with a buffing wheel like this, or even with the JFJ or the other machine I have, all you're doing is flowing over the scratches. You're just moving melting a little bit of the material and moving it over the scratches so the laser can read through it. So you're going to see, you'll see some scratches, but if you look really, really close, you will see that they are filled in and just kind of leveled out so it can play. And that's how I do the Blu-rays. Uh, sometimes I'll put them in here, but most of the time, it's quicker for me to just uh, put them on the buffing wheel. Okay, on our GameCube discs, let me hang it around here so you can see. You can see how scratched up this GameCube disc is. And this is Animal Crossing. And like I said, on these, don't don't even bother buying the the kit for your JFJs. You'll ruin more discs than you'll save. Um, the best way to clean the GameCube game is your buffer. Now, I have, if you have scratches on these that are pretty, that are really bad, you know, that you're catching your fingernail on or they don't want to buff out, I use um, a piece of the sandpaper, the fine that comes off of my um, JFJ and then what I'll do is I'll just take it and is I'll just work all the way around it a little bit at a time I know everybody oh my god you're ruining that disc you're ruining that disc that's a perfectly good GameCube game take my sandpaper and then I'll, I'll just sand this is kind of this is one that I've peeled off that's wore out a little bit and I'll just work all the way around the around the disc sanding it until I get her all figure okay that's enough I got my should have my scratches out and then I'll take my buff here Put a little of that wax or whatever the hell it is, that polishing compound, and... take a little Windex afterwards and put a little and wipe them down with a little Windex and there's your GameCube disc all cleaned ready to play All right, so we covered PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and Blu-ray games, uh, movies, 
are the same as uh, your PlayStation games. Uh, this coating on them soft enough you can use your machines. Uh, now your Sega games, they have a little harder surface on them. Uh, you can clean most of it up on your with your machine, your JFJ, and then buff out as much as you can, and most of the time you can get them to work. Uh, same with CDs. CDs seem to be a little bit more, um, I don't know if you want to call them tricky or whatever. They, uh, you can get most of the scratches out of a, a CD music video, not video, music CD. But uh, some of the scratches you can never get out, and you're always going to have at least one song or two that's going to skip. That's, it's not perfect. On those, you're going to probably, uh, on music CDs, you can save probably 50 to 60%. Uh, it, it's really low on those and the Sega, Sega games and your Blu-rays. Um, but your Game Cubes... If you do it like I do with the regular buffer and sanding out scratches by hand, you can save probably 70 to 80 percent of your GameCube. The machines will uh, fix, and you can save between uh, same thing between 70 and probably 80 percent of your video games, as long as they're not really scratched up. If they're really scratched up, you don't even bother with them. You know, you run your fingernail over and it goes click, 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 click. Some of those you can save, but most of them you're just going to end up throwing them away. You're just going to waste your time. Put them in a pile and work on them some other time when you have more time to screw around with uh, saving games. I've probably thrown out more games than what people, some people have ever owned. I mean, I know I've thrown probably a thousand games out just because they're that bad. And some of them I'll throw out because it's just, you know, you look at it and yes, I can fix it, but it's a sports game. What am I going to get for it when I get it done? Five bucks, if I'm lucky, maybe a dollar ninety-nine. I mean, if you're really hard up for the two bucks, then spend the time and fix it. In other words, save the case and throw everything else out. I've, like I said, I've thrown so many of them away. Just because they're old sports games and just stuff that you have, you know, 15 or 20 copies of. So that's how I clean games. And now we'll get into a little bit on how I price them. All right, now when pricing games to sell or just to check out what yours are worth or what somebody's gonna trying to sell you one for I use price charting pricecharting.com now this is a paid paid site mainly for um, store owners and and people like that or whatever whether you're selling or not I, I think it's I think my subscriptions like 12 bucks a month for this which it's well worth it. Uh, what I do is uh, take your game. Uh, let's see, we'll do Silent Hill here. And let's see, a lot of these used games, they have the barcode covered up. So I have to just take him. Oh, come on. Slide him down a little bit. And I use a barcode reader. Uh, these are only about 15 bucks on Amazon. Use my link down below if you want to buy a barcode reader. And we'll just scan our barcode. You can see it puts it in there and then brings up your game. This will also tell you what, what you should buy, what you should be buying this game for if you're buying it off of an individual to resell. Let me get this straightened out. Okay. So you can see uh, we have Silent Hill HD Collection uh, has the manual with it and the, and the disc. Uh, we cleaned up the disc earlier. Loose would be you buy it for like three dollars and twenty five twenty cents. That would be if you if somebody brought it in like this. And then you'd sell it for fifteen ninety nine. Now complete. 
you would pay somebody seven dollars and eighty cents for this game and you resell it for $25.99 see this game is still holding its value now if you get lucky and somebody happens to bring you one in unopened you buy it for ten dollars and twenty cents and then resell it for $33.99 and up top here this is kind of the average of what what they're kind of selling for $15.29, $24.99 and 31 oop, wrong one. okay and if you go down here a little bit on here it'll show you sites that are that they're actually listed on but I have found that most of this never does kind of pan out for me you know we'll see it here on eBay and I don't know how old that listing was you can see, okay, brand new, $30.99 on eBay. So you can kind of figure that most of this, most of these are old listings. It will find what is listed on eBay for this, for this game. Now, if you have a, a loose game or you don't have a barcode reader, We'll just go up top here. Okay, and we'll we'll do this one. Uh, you can see how long ago I, I priced this. Oh, this has probably been about two years ago. That's how long this disc has been sitting around. We'll type in Mortal Kombat. Mm, nope, not up there yet. Okay. Mortal Kombat, what are we, uh, Armageddon, okay, okay, there's Armageddon, and we'll click on that, and what it'll do is it'll bring them all up, maybe, okay, eight games, where are they at, there they are, see they've changed this site around a little bit, okay, so we have it in PlayStation 2. There's a couple other ones for the PlayStation 2. You have Greatest Hits and Premium Edition. And this this copy is just, just the regular Mortal Kombat Ar Armageddon. So we'll go up here and we'll click on PlayStation 2. Come on. And you can see loose, it's still selling for $13.99, and I have $5.99 on it. So as it goes, as they age, they're, they're kind of gaining in price. And you can see loose, you'd pay $2.80 for it. And you also have a graph over here as to what it's been doing. You know, like in 2000 and looks like 2013, it was selling for like 592, and now over here in 2021, you can see it's up to 1887, which would be our complete price. And down here, let's see, we'll, we'll click on loose. Now it'll show us our loose prices. You can see how it started out way back here in 2008. It was $23.95 loose. And then it went down for quite a while, $2.99. And, then, and now we're climbing back up here in 2021. Loose, it's $15.53. So you can kind of decide whether you want to sell it for the $13.99. You only pay $2.80 for it. You can decide whether you want to put $13.99 on it or if you you know you just want to move it you know put $9.99 on it and move it out somebody will buy it a little quicker at $9.99 than at $13.99 now if you're looking up a console uh, we'll come up here to uh, what do you want me to look up uh, let's look up a 360 highlight your 360 right here 
click on it, it'll bring up all the 360. And come down here. And let's see. Genera. Come on. We're going to go down to systems. Click on systems. Scroll down here a little bit. And let's get rid of that pop up there. Okay. And there you can see all of your systems. Okay, what system do we have? Oh, we have a slim 4 gig console. So we'll click on our 4 gig console. That'll be in the box loose meaning they just kind of they brought it into you everything's there and same with the complete you know e either way it can be with the box or without the box complete meaning that you get your console controller uh, power cord AV cord, or, or HDMI cord with it meaning that you can actually just go hook it up and it's ready to go uh, you're you're going to want to pay somebody like $22.80 for it and then you're going to clean it all up and make sure everything works. You might have to put a laser in it. You can test the consoles if you want. Most of the time I just check them to make sure they boot and they're not, you know, red ring or red eye or brown eye, whatever. And just make sure they're booting up and, and they will connect to the internet without being banned. Laser, I don't worry about because I most of the time I'm I tear them down, clean them, and I check the laser anyway and put a new laser in them most of the time if I if it need be. If not, I will adjust the laser to make sure it's down into specs where it's going to work longer than you know they're going to get the use out of it before the laser does go bad. And see, you you'll sell it for like fifty six ninety nine when you're done getting it all ready. You know, 2011. Yeah, that's about when they, when the Slim came out. They were, you know, you were selling them for 177 dollars. But as you can see, from like 2017 on, uh, let's see, 19 and 20, they were down. But now, in 2021, they're they're climbing back up, and because uh, more people are playing them, playing the 360 again. Uh, once the Xbox One and all that came out, you know, everything really kind of hit the toilet for the, the 360. But people are going back to the 360 for the simple fact is you can get hard copy of games for it. A heck of a lot cheaper and uh, they're finding out that, uh, you know, playing online is fun, but they also want to play, play by themselves. <laughs> and they're, they're kind of gaining in value again, the 360s basically the slim you know that's one of the that's the newer one uh, or not the newest but the newest 360 would be the E which I am not a big fan of the E but that that's beside the point I just think they're kind of built chintzy let's see if they even have a E on here to no, to slim Arcade system. Oh, let, yeah, let's let's check out an old white arcade System and see what see what they're doing. Yeah, see they're still selling for still sell it for about 46 45 46 bucks Which is not bad for an old 360 uh, Still haven't seen the E and then you have your limited editions, your 320 gig, 120 gig, you know. Those will all be worth a little bit more. Slim console, 250. Just for the hell of it. Let's see if that's an E. They're not specifying whether it's an E or not. Nope, that's an old, old one too. That's the old Slim. $60.99 with a 250 gigabyte hard drive complete but you can check your PAL system you know your PAL format and everything I don't see the E there it is everybody's probably saying it's right there in front of you 
we'll go with a 250E. $58.99. Which is not bad. You have to buy them right. Buy the stuff right. You can't be giving somebody 60 bucks for a, an old 360 and try and make money. You can check every system on here. All the Nintendos. All the Playstations. In regular in Europe, POW, or Japan, the JP. They have all the pricing up for all of them. Same with Sega. I mean, every Sega known to man, every Xbox, all the way down to the X. Ataris. You know, you can check on your figurines, especially the Skylanders. I, I, have, a, I have a lot of Skylanders that I'm kind of collecting. Neo Geo. And all the other systems, Nintendo Power, PC and MS-DOS, Strategy, Guides, 3D, you know, you can see down to Famicom and Gizmoda. There's, a, there's one for you. Right, right there, Gizmoda. Never even heard of a Gizmoda. Quit doing that. Okay. There's Gizmoda. Okay, classic. Com Compodium. I don't see any systems. I want to see a system for Gizmodia. Okay, Gizmodia, Cross, Hockey, Pocket, Pointed Destruction, SX. Sticky balls. Oh, yeah, there you, that's what you want. Sticky balls. Okay, there's only a little bit. This must be one they just added because they don't have listings for every every game. And no systems yet. So nobody has posted anything on a system. Okay, but that's how I price my games. Uh, most of the time, like I said, you, you can price them... Like this one was, uh, what What the hell was it, $25.99. You can look at the case, look at everything, the artwork. You know, if if you think that the, the case is cracked, you can put a, new cra put a new case on it, you know, and make it look better. But if you just want to sell it the way it is, check everything, check your disc. Your disc should be good because we already cleaned it. Uh, you got some stickers on it and all that, so you might want to just go ahead and stick $19.99 on it to, to move it out. Somebody will buy it pretty quick at $19.99 because they see them everywhere else for $25.99. And then you can go buy more crap. And that's the whole name of the game, is you buy crap, you sell crap, you make money to buy more crap to sell more crap. So that's how I get my games cleaned up and I get them priced and ready to sell. So if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it because I always enjoy showing people what I'm doing and how to do stuff to help other people out. So if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe. So until next time. See ya.